I purchased this cheap Celestica Seastone DX010 switch from eBay used. It has been up and running for several weeks. It's very stable. I'm very happy with the purchase. I want to have this video because as a home labor, when I first entered the 100 gigabit field, I faced so many different options when it comes to cables. It's dramatically different than the 1 gigabit or 10 gigabits world there are some compatibility things to consider there are some new concept to understand especially as a home user as a home labor sometimes it's you can only rely on internet search but because the 100 gigabits it's kind of in the enterprise networking field. Normally, there won't be many discussions about the topics you are interested. So that's why I want to have this video to share some of my experience about the cables for home levers 100 gigabits switch. Currently, out of the 32 available 100 gigabits ports, I already used 11 of them. Among the 11, I have five different cables. Let me show you from left to the right. First, 40 gigabits breakout DAC cable, then 100 gigabits DAC cable. This is 40 gigabits DAC cable. This is 100 gigabits breakout DAC cable and this is transceiver plus fiber. Let's first talk about in general for 100 gigabits, what options you have. So I found this very useful document on internet and it's talking about for this form factor, what's the options. If you are not familiar with QSFP28 for whatever cables you want to plug in, they need to have this particular form factor. If you are familiar with some unified switches, they have the SFP28 part. They have 25 gigabits speed. Q means times four. So you have 100 gigabits. From this chart, you can see depending on the distance, you want to choose different options. Even though they all have the same form factor, which is QSFP28, there are different ways to transfer the signals. First, as home labor, most of our 100 gigabit connections will be within the rack. So this distance, shorter than five meters, is perfect for home lab usage. So that's why four out of five cables I'm going to talk about today, uh, DAC cables in this black area. But if you want to have 100 gigabits connections in your other rooms, instead of just the server room or just around the rack, you need to have fiber connected. So you are in this pinkish area already. I do have one module which support this type of option. The first cable we are going to talk about is the QSSP28 DAC cable. It looks very similar to the familiar SFP plus 10 gigabits cable, right? But if I show them side by side, you can see the difference immediately. So they have the same thickness, but the 100 gig gigabit one, the head, the transceiver is much longer, wider, and the latch is much bigger. The cable itself is much thicker. If you look at this side, the interface with the part is different. I run the Sonic network operating system on the switch. If I run the command to show the current interface status, show interfaces status, Two of them are connected using the 100 gigabits QSFP28 cables. They are showing 100 gigabits, no problem. And the operational status is up. The type is QSFP28. Initially, when I first tried it, it didn't work. After several days research, it turned out the reason is the FEC code here. 
So by default, there's no FEC setting, but for this particular deck cable, I need to set it to FEC RS. If you are interested, just check my another video. I have very detailed explanation about this exercise to find out how to make it work. But basically the command you need to run to set the FEC code is here, config interface FEC. Then you give it the ethernet interface name and then you say RS. The cable will have carrier. Then you will see the green LED light on the switch. Everything will be working. So that's the only thing I want to mention to make sure if you buy the similar cable, you need to pay attention to this FEC code here. And I also want to run another command. Let's check whether the system in fact already told you it should be RS. Let me run another command. The command I want to run is show interface transceiver EEP ROM Ethernet 16. We will explain this command later, but for now, let me simply run it. Check this section. It says this cable is compatible with 40 gigabits. 100 gigabits, 25 and 50. It mentioned with RS. So if I read this part earlier, I should have made this cable work earlier. The second cable is QSFP plus 40 gigabits cable. Just from the look, it's very similar to the 100 gigabits QSFP 28 cable. Maybe the only main difference is the color of the latch. Let's go back to the Sonic operating system. I'm in SSH now. Let me show interfaces status. Now you can see four interfaces. They are showing 40 gigabits because I plug in the QSFP plus cables and follow them. And for the first two, I configured them as link aggregation. That's why you see the port channel here and they are all up and running. In the type, you see the correct QSFP plus type. Now we can check their EEP ROM status to see what's recorded there because that information tells the switch what cables we plug in. The first one I want to check is Ethernet 32, this interface only one rate, which is QSFP plus. The vendor name is Mellanox. There's no any other rate option. We can compare the result for a 100 gigabits one. I can pick this one, Ethernet 80. Immediately, you can see the difference here. For the 100 gigabits, it has additional information in the specification compliance section. It's compatible with multiple rate. And here it says it works works with RS. That's the major difference because you can use the 100 gigabits cable in many different scenarios. But of course, you paid a little bit more for 100 gigabits, but you only use it, for example, as 50 or 25 gigabits. So it's more flexible. But for the 40 gigabits one, it doesn't mention any compliance information. If you go to Amazon when you purchase a 100 gigabits or 40 gigabits DAC cable, one a little bit I would say scary section for a home labor, especially if you are new to 100 gigabits like me, you will be scared about the compatibility section. Let me show you what I mean. For example, this is a 100 gigabits deck cable on Amazon. It lists several wonders. If you are like me, you own a not so popular 100 gigabit bit switch so you don't see your vendor here then what do you do right especially the cable itself is not cheap and you need multiple ones you do not want to waste your time so that's the very common scary thing for a new home labor like me but the way i did was i chose melanox one the reason was my nick are all melanox so that's why i chose this one i remember i did purchase a system one as well in the past it worked just like melanox one no problem in my opinion this part is not 
that important, especially if your switch is compatible with multiple cables and if your switch is not listed here. You know what? In fact, this compatibility information is written in the small EEP ROM section on the transceiver. On the market, there are even devices. For example, this one, you can use it to write whatever data to the EEP ROM. It's the same hardware, it's just depending on which vendor you choose when you place the order, they will write different EEP ROM for you. In my experience, I tried multiple wonders, they all work the same. The next cable is an interesting one. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why I want to try the 100 gigabits switch in my home lab. Let's take a look at one end. It looks the same as the QSFP28 deck cable, which is the 100 gigabits one we just it has four 25 gigabits has so it can connect to four different 25 gigabits devices at the same time they work independently with full speed. I own several unified switches. Some of them has four SFP28 parts. Some of them has two. Most of them has none. But this cheap 100 gigabits switch has 32 times four SFP28 parts capability. If I plug each part with this breakout cable. That's the new thing to me in the 100 gigabits world. So I can use this kind of so-called breakout cable to split one very, very high speed part to four separate ones. That's very interesting, very useful to me. And this is the 100 gigabits one, you can tell from the blue color, right? Here I have the 40 gigabits one. So this big end, similarly, is the QSFP plus part, supports 40 gigabits, right? But the other end, each one of them is regular SFP plus, which is 10 gigabits parts. It can break out to four 10 gigabits parts. Let's go to Sonic OS, talk about the interesting breakout settings. Let's assume, okay, for this Ethernet 4 interface, as you can see, the operating status is done. I don't have any cable plug into this part. So let's assume now I have a 100 gigabits breakout table. I want to plug to this part. How to make it work? It doesn't work automatically. You need to configure it. But the problem is the current Sonic OS breaks on this function. So if you issue the normal configuration command it won't work but at least uh, we can just theoretically talk about how it will work look at the this Ethernet 4 interface in the second column lanes at least four lanes that's a difference if you compare a one gigabit switch with a 100 gigabits one from outside one part is one part right but internally for 100 gigabit switch for each part or they call it interface here it has four separate lanes they can work together to support 100 gigabits they can also be configured to break out on your choice for example, we can configure it to break out to four 25 gigabits parts. The way you want to configure it if the Sonic OS works is uh, using this command. Sorry, the first one should be sudo. The command is config interface breakout. Then you give the interface name. In our case, it's Ethernet 4. Then you see how you want it to break out. Very simple, it's four times 25 gigabits. The 10 gigabits here just say, okay, I can negotiate negotiate and uh, I'm okay to work with this speed as well. That's the simple command to configure it. But because out of the box, the Sonic OS doesn't work. So I have to go with the hard way, which is I need to directly configure the configuration table. See, let's take this interface as an example. Ethernet 
13 from alias you can see the original sequence number for the part so basically this is the 13th part and i already break it out to four different separate interfaces and i give them four different names and each one of them has its own lane and each lane has the speed of 25 gigabits i want to say sudo vi the location of the configuration database is etc sonic and the name of the file is config and score db dot json it's a simple json file very easy to read then let me scroll to the interface see this is the section for the ethernet 48 in the alias i say ethernet 13 and it's the first one don't worry about this name it's just a string you can give it whatever name index is the part index is 13 and the lane is 81 where you get 81 let me take one which is not modified yet yeah let's say this because uh, for the part 11 i haven't plugged in any cable yet so this part is the original database configuration as you can see originally it tells for this single 100 gigabit part it has four lanes so when you break it out you know which lane you need to choose you cannot choose a random one you have to choose from the ones which are generated by the system let's go back to our interface i give it 81 for the first part and then mtu i just uh, keep the existing default one and for speed this is a tricky part because theoretically the, the sonic os in the configuration you can configure each part to support alter negotiation but for some reason i'm not sure whether it's because the limitation of the hardware the switch but anyway when i configure alter negotiation it doesn't work so that's why in my manual configurations, I always give it a hard-coded speed. So for example, this one, I know my cable is 100 gigabits to 425 gigabits breakout cable. So that's why here I give it 25 gigabits. For the other three parts, 49, 50, and 51, they work the same way. So pretty simple. It's just a pure text file, a JSON format. You save it then reload the configuration then it works this is a example for 100 gigabits breakout for the 40 gigabits one the only difference is here in the speed section for the 40 gigabits case you want to give each separate part 10 gigabits instead of 25. the last cable is a module plus a fiber so this solution is much more expensive than the Corber deck cable because of the separate module and the more expensive fiber cables. But it can support much longer distance. So in the future, I'm going to use it to connect to my other rooms. But for now, I use it as a breakout cable as well. So the other end, you can see this for SFP28. To achieve this, you need to buy four separate SFP28 module and the breakout cable and one module for QSFP28. So it's just work like this. You buy a cable with this standard head you plug it in on the screen for the interface status you can see eight of these interfaces are configured using those two cables for breakout for each module the module is qsfp28 module let's check what's the difference from eep rom perspective if we compare to a normal 100 gigabits DAC cable let me first show you the eep rom information for the 100 gigabits DAC cable and then i'm going to run it for the fiber module okay let's compare them side by side for the fiber you can see in the connector side it correctly indicates it's MPO connector and for the deck table it doesn't say anything in the compliance section it supports the 100 SR4 
and for the deck cable is 100 CR4 so you need to purchase different fiber cables based on what type of module you use then the other things are almost the same they are all so called Mellanox compliant so now we have gone through all the five different types of cables I'm using for my home lab 100 gigabit switch they are just based on my limited experience on 100 gigabits switch hope it's helpful thanks for watching